Hi everyone, in today's video we're gonna check out this uh, open source 2 FA authenticator called uh, AntiAuth. I came across it while browsing Reddit and uh, I just had to try it. As you can see, uh, it's uh, it has encryption enabled and has many many more features that l looks cool like uh, setting up icons and showing the next code. So we're gonna see how to set it up on Truna scale using a custom Docker image. Uh, if you are like me and you have and you have been wanting to get rid of uh, Google Authenticator and own self-host your own uh, 2FA, uh, then this is the video for you. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and let's get started. All right, so let's start. First, we're gonna create a dataset for it uh, under apps config. I'm gonna create a simple uh, data set called NT. It must be apps, of course, like uh, always. All right, then uh, let's go to apps. First, as you can see, if I search NT here, it's not there because it's not uh, in the default uh, repository of uh, Tronos. So we need to install it manually. Uh, what we're gonna do is go to the documentation, you will find the link uh, below. Okay, so first we're gonna create a folder. Uh, actually, it's already created with the dataset. Uh, so we're gonna download three files. The first one is the docker compost file. So let's go to uh, the data set we created, so in apps config and T and then we download the docker compose file and then we download this one and then this one and finally we need to create an empty file called the museum.yam Alright, the next thing is uh, we're going to need to edit compost.yaml and uh, replace the following. First, we remove the build section and uh, replace it with an image. And uh, we replace the path to add the, the absolute path of our files we just downloaded. To do that, we're going to use nano directly in compost. So, I'm going to copy this. and remove this on these lines and then I'm gonna copy this make sure to edit the path uh, to be exactly as uh, you have in your uh, data set and then we need to add this path for those three lines so it's gonna be like this, like this, credentials, museum, and data. Oh, yeah, we also need to create a folder uh, called data. We're gonna do it just uh, after that. And the last edit is this. We're gonna find it in the bottom, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's create a folder called, called data. And that should be it. Now we need to copy compose.yaml file to use it in uh, apps. This should be it. To copy, we need to do control and insert. That should be it. Now, next, you go to apps, discover apps, and then you click uh, the three dots here and then install VIM. We name it anti or anti auth. And you copy this. Uh, there is something to notice. Uh, make sure the parts here are uh, not used before 
if you have another app that is using 8080 make sure to modify it to use like 5080 or something for me I don't have an, another app using that part so it should be fine for me same thing with other services 5432 check uh, that's it save okay now it's running uh, to test if it's working properly you can either check the logs or an easier way is to just uh, go to the 8080 port and uh, slash ping make sure to put the Trunos IP and uh, you should get this pong message this means it's working properly now we're gonna see how to set it up on uh, our mobile device okay now let's install it on uh, our device you can find it in the play store anti-auth by default it's gonna use the default server so we need to change it to do that uh, the first time we open the app, we click seven times on the screen and you will get this pop-up. Are you sure you want to modify developer settings? Yes. And we input our uh, endpoint, our anti-auth server. So for me, it's going to be the sweet bar 8080. Uh, we need to remove the slash. All right, now let's create a user. You have to put a strong password, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, now there is an issue with this. You can you, you need to receive an OTP to create an account, but since we are uh, self-hosting it, we don't have uh, the email is not gonna be sent. So to do there is a trick around it. We're gonna check the logs. We'll find the code there. So it should be in museum container. So let's connect. Uh, yeah, where is it? Verification code for seven for eight twenty seven. For seven for eight twenty seven. I probably can see this. So I'm gonna just. Uh, Yeah, so here is the code, verification code, and it works. Uh, there you have recovery key in case uh, you forgot your password, so I'm going to just save it as a file for now. But make sure to make a backup, of course. All right, so now we created our, our account. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now is uh, import it from uh, my Google Authenticator. Okay, so to export uh, our codes first, you go to Google uh, Authenticator. I'm just using a test uh, account uh, right now. And uh, transfer codes, export codes. You select which codes you want, and then you get QR code. I need to save this as a save this as screenshot, or uh, save it in another device, and then we go back to NT, and we click on import code, not scan QR code, but import code, and then we choose which uh, which which authenticator we used. So it's Google Authenticator for me. Scan QR code, and now we're gonna scan the QR code we did. All right, you have imported four codes. Okay, here we can see them, and you can also see the the next code as you can see. And yeah, that's it. It's all done. Let's see what we can do with it. This is better. Dark is always better. Apparently, we need to specify the issuer so that the icon's uh, function work. Yeah, it will detect it. And uh, so, for example, if I try to edit this and put uh, Facebook instead, 
should be able to detect the icon. Yeah. All right. That's about it. Now we don't need to use Google Authenticator anymore. Like and share if you made it this far. See you in the next video.